Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name's Claire Betendach, and I'm on staff at Karis, and it's an honor for me to be your host this evening. So um, welcome from wherever you're joining us, hopefully in the world. Make sure you put in the chat section uh, where you're watching from, and we'll go back and check out where you are in the world. Um, but for the benefit of those who are not familiar with how our live Bible studies work, I'm going to run through a few announcements, and then I'm going to hand you over to our amazing teacher, Rick McFarland. So uh, we are live five days a week. Monday and Friday is 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays is 6 p.m., and Wednesdays bright and early at 7 a.m. in the morning, and that's all mountain time. So you may have to do some calculating depending on what time zone you're in or what part of the world you're in, but hopefully you can catch us live multiple times a week, um, because if you can catch us live, then you're able to interact with us. So while Rick's teaching this evening, if he says something that triggers a question, just go ahead and pop it into the chat section on whatever platform you're watching on, and we'll get those questions. And in the last 10 to 15 minutes, we're gonna answer as many questions as we possibly can. And if we don't get to them all tonight, on Tuesdays at three o'clock, if you tune back in, we do a Q&A roundup of all the questions that we can't get to throughout the week. Um, so hopefully, if your question's not answered tonight, it'll be answered on Tuesday. Um, but if you need prayer, please call our prayer line. They are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So um, the number is 719-635-1111. Um, the team, they are a fantastic team of prayer ministers and they will pray with you. They'll just, you know, walk you through whatever it is you're going through. Um, so don't be shy, pick up the phone, don't be alone. Uh, give our prayer ministers a call and uh, let them pray with you um, any time of day. Um, so I think, oh, one more announcement. While you're on the phone with our prayer ministers, if you'd like to donate to this ministry, um, you can go ahead and do that uh, on the prayer line. You can also go to um, awmi.net forward slash give and donate that way as well. And I just wanna say a very big thank you. If you do donate to this ministry, thank you so much because it's because of people like you that we're able to reach more and more people every day and lives are being changed every single day because of our partners. So thank you so much if you are a partner or if you do donate to this ministry. So um, my announcements are done. So I'm now gonna hand you over to the wonderful Rick McFarland. Good evening, sir. Good evening. <laughs> For those of you who may not be familiar with who Rick is, he's our Dean of Faculty. So he keeps all our instructors in line, right? It's hard, but yeah. <laughs> you try, <laughs> sweat. <laughs> well, I'm honored to be sharing tonight with you. So, um, Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got for us. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Always a joy to be with you guys. So tonight I want to talk about the power of praying in tongues. And so sometimes that's a very confusing thing. So actually, Paul said in 1 Corinthians, I would not have you be ignorant of spiritual gifts. And whenever Paul says, I would not have you to be ignorant, that means most are. And so there is a lot of confusion around praying in tongues. So hopefully tonight we'll shed some light on praying in tongues. So praying in tongues, we need to realize is that out of all the forms of prayer that we find in the Old Testament, there's one form that was not in the Old Testament that's unique to this dispensation of the New Testament of grace. And praying in tongues is the only form of prayer that you find in the New Testament you can't find in the Old Testament. And so before grace came in the New Testament, you were left to your own ability and resources to do whatever God asked you to do. And so before grace came, before the new covenant came, people prayed, but they prayed in their own resources, out of their own intellect. And so, but when grace came, uh, there's a new form of prayer. And so what I call praying in tongues is grace prayer. What's grace? It's God's uh, ability, it's his help for, for doing what we couldn't do in the natural. So God's grace is his help. And so I don't know about you, but I need help. Amen. And so if you're watching this with someone on the couch or something, just lean over and say, you need help. 
And so, yeah, we need help. And so the Holy Spirit is our helper. And so that's what mm. separates the old covenant from the new covenant is that the ministry of the Holy Spirit inside the heart of a believer. And so in John 14, let's look at verse 16. And this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 says, I will pray the Father. This is Jesus speaking. I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper uh, that he may abide with you forever. And so the Holy Spirit is called the helper. Greek word paraclete. That's not parakeet. Paraclete. <laughs> paraclete means one called alongside to help. And so uh, that's, I think one of the things that the Holy Spirit loves to help us with is in our prayer life. Mm. But we need to uh, lean on the Holy Spirit, bring him into our prayer life. And so praying in tongues is one of the most powerful ways that we can involve the Holy Spirit in our prayer life and this in our life in general. And so let's look at praying in tongues. It's called grace prayer. It, it's the help of the Holy Spirit in prayer. Look at Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps. We're talking about the helper. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. So here Paul's going to bring out in this verse something that we have in our prayer life called a weakness. And there's a limitation. If we just pray out of our understanding, our intellect, there's a limitation to that. We have a weakness. What's the weakness? We don't know what to pray as we ought. Oftentimes we don't know where our problem came from. We don't know how it came up. We don't know how to get out of it. Yeah. Uh, but the Holy Spirit does. And so if you invite the Holy Spirit into it, He will help you pray. It says, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Now just look in this verse, you say, well, pastor, this, this has, says the Holy Spirit makes intercession. So how is this praying in tongues? That's a great question. Look at that word helps in our weaknesses. Look at the word helps. It's a big, long Greek word. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but this long Greek word means this, the word for help. In the Greek, it means to take hold together against. Take hold together against. And so if we were trying to move this table and I said, I want you to help me move this table. Right. And then you went after it and I just sat there and watched, you know, I wouldn't be helping, right? Right. <laughs> so, so actually the Holy Spirit is going to take hold together against our weakness. So what does this mean? That this is a cooperation in prayer. The Holy Spirit is going to give us the words of intercession. He's going to give us the ability to be able to pray in an unknown language called tongues because it says in groanings that cannot be uttered. Actually, the Greek says that cannot be uttered in articulate language. And so the Holy Spirit gives us an intercession and helps us against our weaknesses. But we have a part to play in that. We need to open our mouth in in prayer and cooperate. And the Holy Spirit is going to help us intercede. So I'm going to talk about the difference between the ministry of the Holy Spirit at the new birth and the ministry of the Holy Spirit when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. It's called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so we're saved, but later we have a subsequent experience that we can have called the baptism yep. in the Holy Spirit. And so what's the difference between that? Because a lot of people say, well, when I got saved, I got the Holy Spirit. Well, that's absolutely true. Matter of fact, Romans 8, 9 says, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to Jesus. And so you're none of His. But we do have the Holy Spirit when we're saved. So what's the difference? And so when you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside you. And in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit comes upon you. Mm. And so let's look at the differences there. So in the new birth, He comes to live in us. Look at John 4. Look at verse 14. This is the King James Version. John chapter 4, look at verse 14. Jesus said this, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him, shall be in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. So in the new birth, it's seen as a well. A well is for your own private benefit. It's for, for your nourishment, for your satisfaction and benefit. And it says it springs up to eternal life. And so the new birth brings you eternal life. And so it's for you. You can't give your eternal life out to other people. They have to experience it themselves. But when you got saved, you got a well of eternal life on the inside. And you can enjoy that anytime. So that's the Holy Spirit indwelling a believer. But let's talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And this is where the Spirit comes upon you. Look in Acts chapter 1, look at verse 8. Acts chapter 1, look at verse 8. 
Jesus says this to disciples that already believed upon Jesus, believed that he rose from the dead, already saw him raised from the dead, believed he was Lord, saw and believed that he got raised from the dead. But look in Acts chapter 1, look at verse 8, Jesus said that to these disciples, something's going to come also besides you just believing in me. But he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon come upon you and you shall be my witnesses to, with, uh, uh, to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I'm going to give you uh, one more verse. There's many verses that talk about the Holy Spirit coming upon you. That's that baptism in the Holy Spirit that brings the gift of, of tongues. But look in Acts chapter 10. I'm just going to give you another one for time's sake. We're not going to be able to share more. But Acts chapter 10, look at verse 44. It says, this is Peter with Cornelius, the first Gentile that is getting preached to. Peter's preaching to him and to his household. It says, now while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon. Fell upon those who heard the word and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then Peter answered. And so oftentimes that baptism in the Holy Spirit can happen right after you get born again. Yeah. You don't have to wait very long. You get born again and then you're a candidate for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Mm. So once the Spirit is in you, He can be upon you for service. And so let's look at the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So again, the new birth where the Spirit is in you, it's for your benefits for eternal life. But let's look at the baptism in the Holy Spirit and what it's likened to. And so look at John chapter 7, look at verse 37. And so this is Jesus in the King James Version. It says, Jesus said in John 7, 37, before in John chapter 4, he called the Spirit a well, but later he's going to say the Spirit is something else. John 7, look at verse 37. It says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, that's someone that's already believed upon him, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And so here we're going to see that, that in the salvation experience, it's a well on the inside of you. But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, then out of your belly will flow rivers. You had a well, that's for you. <laughs> rivers is for other people. It's going to flow out and bless other people. So you have rivers flowing out of you. That's called the, the, your prayer language. That's called the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. And so I want you to see something in this verse. One day I saw something here and it, it sparked a search in me. Look at John seven thirty eight again. Jesus said, he that believeth on me as the scripture has said. As the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Immediately I went and started looking in the Old Testament because that's the only scripture they had at that time. So I went into the Old Testament to find where was it written, right. that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water and couldn't find a single verse. You cannot find a single verse that actually says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But Jesus said, as the scripture has said. So I had to come to a point is, well, is, do I believe Jesus or do I believe what appears not to be there? And I go with Jesus. Yes. And so I went back and said, well, Jesus, obviously you weren't mistaken. So show me how this is in the scripture because I don't see it quoted. And so he had me go back and do a study on rivers of living water. So I, I typed that into my search engine and, and lo and behold, I found where it's listed in the Old Testament, but it's in a type and a shadow. The Old Testament's filled with types and shadows. Awesome. And you're going to find this in a type and a shadow in the book of Ezekiel. I want you to see this in the book of Ezekiel. Look at chapter 47. Look at verse 1. And this is going to be a prophecy of Ezekiel. And Ezekiel 47, this is going to be talking about the temple. And Ezekiel 47 verse 1 says, Then he brought me back, This is he, he, the Lord brought Ezekiel back to the door of the temple. The door of the temple. And there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the front of the temple faced east, and the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple south of the altar. So this verse says that you have the door of the temple, which is the threshold of the temple, but it says there's a water source under deep underneath the door of the temple. Yeah. And in verse 2 it says, He brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around the outside of the outer gateway that faces east, and there was water running out of the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the water came to my ankles. 
Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through, and the water came to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep, water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. Starts out with water, and now it's a river. Mm. But Jesus said, rivers will flow out. Keep reading. In verse 6 it says, And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. And when I returned there along the bank of the river, there were many trees on one side and the other. Then he said to me, This water flows towards the eastern region going down to the valley and enters into the sea. That's the Dead Sea. Which when it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the rivers. See, it started out as water. Then it went into a river and then became rivers. Yeah. Rivers will go, will live, living rivers mm. of water. There will be a great multitude of fish because of these waters go there, for they will be healed and everything will live wherever that river goes. <clears throat> and so we see a literal thing that's going to be happening one day, but in type and shadow, Jesus alludes to it and says, right now that's taking place spiritually. That's now guess awesome. what? We're the New Testament temple. Mm. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Where's the door of the temple? Yeah. Your tongue. And it says deep below the door of the temple, the threshold, there's a source of water springing up out. And so that's called the Holy Spirit. In our belly, the rivers of water through the Holy Spirit will come out when we pray in tongues. But it says that the water, as it went out a thousand cubits, it went to the ankles, went to the knees, went to the waist, and then you could swim in it. But for that to take place, the water had to keep flowing yeah. and keep flowing yeah. and not stop. It couldn't be sporadic. It couldn't stop for a while. It would have to keep going. And that speaks of a believer that if you'll keep praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues, there's going to be a river that will turn into rivers and they're living water. And wherever it goes, it'll bring healing. That is so cool. Wherever the Holy Spirit takes it, it's going to bring life. It's going to bring healing. And the Holy Spirit knows where it needs to go. He knows areas of you that are dead, the areas of your life and other people's lives and, and uh, the, the kingdom of God, wherever that needs to go. You can actually send rivers in the spirit by praying in tongues. And so again, if you don't see something uh, according to the New Testament, pray, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. He will show you what the answer is. I want to really open my heart up tonight. I'm going to, going to open my heart and, and be honest with you and, and be transparent because I think sometimes it helps if we're transparent with each other. You know, I've, in my past, I've struggled a lot with prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just saw it as a duty, as an obligation, and I would uh, attempt to pray, get on my knees. And I was taught as a Baptist boy, you need to do it as early as possible. You need a quiet time. And I, and I said, when I first heard that, I said, well, that sounds nice. He said, well, probably not, because it needs to be as early in the morning as possible. <laughs> Before God you, gets too busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to wake my angel up, you know. And so we would get, you know, so I'd get in an uncomfortable position where I'd fall asleep. And so, so I would go through, and, and so I just kind of end up saying the same thing every single day. I'd pray through the, the missionaries and the world and, bless them, mm. and my needs and stuff like that. And, so, you know, I messed up here. And, and so every day it almost seemed like the same thing. It was almost like a monologue. And it got dry and boring, and I dreaded it. And I've heard other people say where they told the Lord, says, Lord, I'm, I'm an hour before I'm dreading this. And the Lord says, I was dreading it two hours. Right. <laughs> and so I know the Lord was dreading this because it was a monologue every yeah. single day. I actually, being honest with you, I told the Lord one time, I said, you know what, I'll say this all some time. I'm going to record this message today. <laughs> and then in the morning, I'll sit at the tape recorder, hit play, and then I'll go do whatever I need to do. If you want to hear it, you can hear it. But uh, that's you know what? Awesome. <laughs> but it, it was like the same thing every day. And you're like, you know what? And they were taught as a, as a boy that Jesus says, can you not tarry one hour? No, I couldn't. And I, I tried. And so, you know what? I'm going to pray for an hour. And so I go down and I saw so I'm praying and I surely I've reached over an hour. I look up, it's 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and I run out of everything I say. <laughs> and so then I think, well, you know what? The only thing I have left to do is pray in tongues. So I'd pray in tongues for a few minutes and then I'd end and, and then just go out with unsatisfaction. I just didn't feel satisfaction mm. in my prayer life and I dreaded it, to be honest with you. But one day I came across a verse that showed how Paul prayed and it totally revolutionized my prayer life. I want you to see 1 Corinthians 14, 15 because how Paul prayed was not how I was praying. And so I want to look at 1 Corinthians 14, look at verse 15.
Paul says, what is it then? <clears throat> I will pray with the spirit. That's praying in tongues. And I will pray with the understanding also. That's his natural language. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with my natural understanding. Here Paul was said, I started out praying in tongues mm. and then ended up praying in my natural language. No, I, I was opposite. I was doing the backwards. I was actually praying in my natural understanding as far and as long as I could. And then finally I said, okay, well, I don't have anything else to do. I'll just pray in tongues for a few minutes. And then I would stop. And then I would, I would feel like it was the same thing every single day. And I hated it. And I felt guilty for hating it. Right. Anything you have to do, you'll hate. Yeah. And so... The Holy Spirit pointed out that Paul started out different. He started praying in tongues first. And so instead of uh, uh, starting his prayer, engaging his brain and his own intellect and his own limitations and guiding out with what he had and then pray in the spirit. No, no. He started out by inviting the Holy Spirit to help. Mm. He says, I need your help and guidance from the very beginning. And so he started praying in tongues. And then as he's praying in tongues, he'd be sensitive to the earth promptings of the Holy Spirit on what he's praying in tongues and what he needs to pray out in English. Mm. And so it's not just praying in tongues or just praying in English or whatever language you speak in. It's a combination. But start praying in tongues. Ask the Holy Spirit from the very beginning and he will guide you and lead you into prayer and then be sensitive to the promptings and the, and the impressions he gives you and start praying that in, out in English. Mm. See, every day I was praying the same thing over and over and over again. It was so boring. But when I started doing this, my prayer time took new direction every single time I prayed. Yeah. Oh, the Holy Spirit would take me in this direction and prompt me to pray that. I would have never yeah. thought to pray about right. that. Pray yeah. about things that I that I that uh, I didn't even realize I needed to be praying for. And so every time I would come out satisfied, and that the Lord led me and helped me in prayer. And so I believe if you'll do that, yeah. that'll help you very much. So pray in the Spirit and then be sensitive. Actually, there's a <laughs> verse that tells us to do that. Look in Colossians. Look at chapter four. Look at verse two. This is Paul. Talking about prayer, Colossians 4, 2 says, continue in prayer. Matter of fact, in the New Testament, it says, you know, in the Old Testament, they had times of prayer. They had an hour of prayer. And so they would have a times in the temple where you would sit and pray. But the New Testament says, pray without ceasing. Mm. How would you do praying without ceasing if you're just leaning on your natural English language or your own understanding? No, you can actually pray in tongues throughout your day. Now, if you're at work, don't be going real loud and, and you, know, you know, they'll think you're weirder than you are. Uh, no, under your breath, you can pray in tongues throughout your day. You can be praying in the spirit, the, that river flowing under the door of the temple. It's coming out throughout the day and it's going and then it going from the knees to the to the waist and to the where you're swimming and it's bringing healing. So continue in prayer and watch. Pray, continue in prayer and watch in the same with Thanksgiving. What are you watching for? Watching for what the spirit's leading you to pray for. He'll give you an impression. He'll give you a prompting. Pray that out. And I believe your prayer life will take a new dimension that you didn't have. And so I'm going to get open my heart, be transparent. And uh, there was a time when I just was honest with the Lord. And I said, Lord, I've heard so many people say that praying in tongues will change someone's life. You know, I just prayed in tongues and my life changed. I had power that I didn't have before. I had such supernatural um, a change in my life by praying in tongues. And I was just honest with the Lord one day and I said, Lord, I don't see it. I pray in tongues. Uh, you know, I can pray in tongues. I have prayed in tongues, but I haven't seen much difference. And so God, what's going on? And he answered back. He was faithful. And he says, it's because you don't do it enough. You don't do it long enough. And I was only doing a minute or two. And let me tell you how, just be honest, transparent again, this yeah. transparent night yeah. uh, in prayer. When I was young in the Lord, I used prayer to make sure I was still saved. I'd mess up and I'd say, oh, yeah. oh, it's still there. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Prayer, praying in tongues is not to see if you're saved or not. And so praying in tongues is for to commune with God. And we're going to look at all the benefits of praying in tongues. And so the Lord showed me that I was only praying a few minutes in tongues and I wasn't going beyond the very initial stage of what tongues does. I want you to see the very initial stage of what praying in the tongues does. Do Look at Psalms 100 verse 4. This verse talks about the protocol to the presence of God. There's a protocol to God's presence. Psalms 100, look at verse 4. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and in his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. 
That's the divine protocol to God's presence is thanksgiving and praise. You want to experience God's presence like never before? Start thanking Him, start praising yeah. Him, start worshiping yeah. Him. You do that in church. You're in the glory cloud almost after you come out of church because you've been focusing on Him. You've been in thanksgiving and praise. And so when you start praying in tongues, immediately the Holy Spirit will start getting you to praise and thank God. Matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 14, 17 says, For when you pray in tongues, you give thanks well, but the other is not edified. And so the Lord was showing me that all I was doing, and I was giving the Holy Spirit a little bit of time to lead me to praise God and to thank God, but there was deeper realms of tongues. There's deeper things that tongues does, and I wasn't ever getting into those deeper things. And what are they? Look in Ephesians 6, 18. Here's some deeper things you can get into with tongues. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. This is supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. How can you supplicate for all the saints when you don't owe all the saints? Mm. But in the spirit you can. Right. And so here it says supplication in the spirit. You know, you can get beyond just praise and worship as your devotional prayer language. You can get into the deeper realms of tongues, get into intercessions and get into supplications. That's when your prayer language changes into like Chinese, ching, ching, chung, <laughs> and you're like, ooh, ooh, business is being <laughs> transacted. And you get excited during that time. And so the more you pray in tongues, the more you're going to have that. I want you to see an interesting verse in Philippians 4, 6. You might be having a worry in your life. You might have an anxiety in your life right now. It might be a financial thing, might be a health situation, might be a real relationship thing. Look at Philippians 4, 6. It says, be anxious for nothing. Mm. I did a, a deep Greek study on the word nothing and it means nothing. <laughs> and that's no wiggle room to word nothing. Be right. anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. In verse 7, if you'll do verse 6, you'll always get verse 7. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Do you have such peace that passes your understanding right now? It's like, I can't understand how I can be so peaceful right now. And it's in my heart. It's over my mind. I am just invaded with peace. If you can't say that, you have not done verse 6. Sometimes I think there's something wrong with me because I'm so peaceful over certain things. I'm like, okay, like, I know, I know it's the Lord. I know yeah. it's good, but I'm like, why, why am I so peaceful? And that's the only verse, explanation. Verse six. Yeah. You refuse to worry. Yeah. You take it to God in prayer. You supplication means definite request. You thank God, live in God. Thank you, got it. You took care of it. I cast my care, yeah. and you and you live in that supernatural peace. But I want you to see that you can actually satisfy verse six by praying in tongues. All three ingredients, prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, all take place when you pray in tongues. Look at that word prayer in verse 6. It's the Greek word prosuke, prosuke. And so earlier Paul said, my spirit, when I pray, my spirit prays, or I'll pray with my spirit, that word pray is prosuke. And so when you pray in tongues, you are uh, prosuking, prosuking, whatever that is. <laughs> you're, 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 you're in prayer. That word supplication when you pray in tongues, you are, you can get into supplications. We just read that. It says with supplication in the spirit. And then with thanksgiving, it says when you pray in tongues, you give thanks well. And so when you pray in tongues over a length of time, you're at a, actually satisfying all three ingredients of verse six, and you'll always get verse seven. I have never gone an hour of praying in tongues solid without walking in a supernatural peace mm. in the core of my being, a peace that's over me. And so that'll happen if you'll just pray in the spirit. Yeah. And so I'm going to end this talking about the benefits of praying in tongues because there's some benefits. You know, there's a thing called a, a Swiss Army knife. I don't know if you have Swiss Army yeah, knife. No, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's a knife that has many different things. It has a screwdriver, it has a regular knife, it has a spoon, it has a fork. It has, <laughs> I mean, you can do so many things with a Swiss Army knife. Well, guess what? The uh, God's Swiss Army knife in the spirit is praying in tongues. That's a good. Because when you pray in tongues, so many things are happening at the same time. And so I want you to look at Psalm 68. Look at verse 19. Psalm 68, 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation, Selah. And so it says the Lord daily loads us. He has benefits with you. He wants to load you with benefits, but you have a part to play in that. It doesn't automatically come upon you. You have to cooperate with that. And one of the best ways to cooperate and be loaded with the benefits is praying in tongues. Mm. 
And so let's talk about some of the benefits that happen when you start praying in tongues and get into grace prayer, where the Holy Spirit helps you. It, first of all, provides power for the Christian walk. Acts 1.8, again, we alluded to that earlier, but Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you and you shall be my witnesses for me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This brings out this verse that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not really for you, it's for others. It's for service. It's power to serve the Lord and to be a witness. Not just do witnessing, to be a witness. Mm. It's power to live a supernatural walk. Yeah. And so this verse talks that it provides power for the Christian walk. And again, I wasn't experiencing a whole lot of power because I wasn't doing it enough. I wasn't doing it long enough. Next of all, when you pray in tongues, it builds you up. It builds you up. Look at 1 Corinthians 14.4. 1 Corinthians 14, 4, it says, He that speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesies edifies the church. Look at that word edifies. Yeah, the best thing that we can translate it today is like charging a battery. Right. You want to build up a battery? You want to charge up that battery? Well, your, your battery inside your heart can be charged up. Have you ever been run down? You just feel like the, you know, the slightest problem just crushes me. You know, I just can't handle it. But if you'll start praying in tongues, all of a sudden you'll recharge that battery. And you'll be like the energizer buddy. It's so true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and so in Jude 20, chapter 1, verse 20, it says, but building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And so you, but it's building yourselves up. See, mm -hmm. God's not going to do it automatically. You have to participate. You need to start praying in tongues. And when you do that, your battery will start getting charged up. And so keep that battery in there. I keep it in all day. Yeah. Just keep it topped off. I don't want to wait. Some people wait till the, the gas tank's empty and they're chugging along. They want to see how far can I get on empty and live off the miracles of God. No, I want to live on a topped off uh, uh, tank, right? Yes. So keep that, keep that charged up. Next the thing besides the power of God and being edified or charged up, it's you speak mysteries. Mysteries. Because we have a peanut brain. <laughs> I'm sorry. Our, and our, my peanut's getting roasted. It's get better than it used to be. But I still have a peanut brain. And what I understand is like a thimble to an ocean. There's a lot that I don't know. There's a mystery to so much, especially yeah. my future. The future is a mystery. What will take place tomorrow? And so look at 1 Corinthians 14.2. It says, for he that speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. The Greek word mysterion. We get the word mysteries. And so your future is a mystery. But if you pray in tongues, he's, he's praying out your future. The Holy yeah. Spirit's in your future. He knows exactly what's happening. And when you pray, you can be praying out the mystery of what's in advance. I also believe when you're praying mysteries, that's the mysteries of the word of God. Mm. The mysteries of that verse, you can't explain. I don't, I can't see it. I just, for some reason, I'm trying to figure it out with my mind and I don't get it. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. All of a sudden, oh, I see it. I know what that verse is. There's another verse that connects with that. It puts it together. Pray in yeah. tongues. In that mystery, that light will come. Next of all, you refresh yourself. You can take a spiritual vacation by praying in tongues. You can get run down. You can get tired and get weary. So what happens when you get weary? Instead of putting on Netflix, well, I'm just going to veg out. That doesn't really satisfy you. It doesn't really build you up. It doesn't really help you. Actually, if you watch the news, it can make it worse. Yeah. And so you need to refresh yourself and no better way to, the, than to pray in tongues. Look in Isaiah 28. Look at verse 11. Isaiah 28, 11 says, For with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest with which I will cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. With stammering lips, pricking of tongues. This is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. And so if you want to refresh, get refreshed, just pray in tongues for a little while, for a season, and you'll find refreshing. Then I want to talk two other ones, is you pray the perfect will every single time the perfect will of God. And I know you guys want to do the will of God. You're like, well, God, what's the will of God? I just want the will of God. Well, if you'll pray in tongues, you'll pray the perfect mm. will of God every single time. How would you like the Holy Spirit to pray for you for an hour? Yeah. Do you think he'd pray in line with the will and it would be good prayer? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Well, you can actually have that happen. When you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit's going to give you the prayers to pray supernaturally, mm. and it's going to roll out of you. And if you pray an hour, you're praying the perfect will of God, the prayer the Holy Spirit gave you. But we don't take advantage of it. No. And, and the enemy wants to, to get us not doing yeah. that. Well, it take, and it takes the pressure off us trying to figure it all out. 
if you just let the Holy Spirit <laughs> guide yeah. you, it's so much easier. And then he opens up our understanding and yeah. shows us what to do in the natural and yeah. brings light. So the last thing is, again, you give thanks well. 1 Corinthians 14, 17. Thanksgiving is a key to the presence of God. It's the divine protocol. So the more thankful you are, the more you're going to access God's presence. And so again, these are so much. So in conclusion, in the new birth, the Spirit comes and lives inside you to benefit you. And the symbol of this is a well, a private well for you. The baptism of the Holy Spirit comes upon, upon you to bless others. This symbol is rivers that go out and bless other people. If you'll continue to pray in tongues every day in a constant stream, not sporadically, not stopping and starting, but if you'll keep this going, it'll be a stream that'll grow and grow and grow, and it'll be a living water that'll go out and bring healing to wherever the Spirit leads it to go. Start your prayer time out in tongues. Start out in tongues. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you, guide you in prayer. Then be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, and He will guide you and give you the impressions to pray in English. And then lastly, get in on the benefits. You have a benefit package today as a Christian, but it's not automatic. You got to tap into it, and you do it by praying in the Spirit. So, last I want you, I just want you to know that if you need to learn more and want to learn more about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you want to pray in tongues, you don't don't understand it. You can reach out to our prayer line 719-635-1111, and we have a prayer minister waiting right to listen to you. I believe you'll get the right prayer minister. They'll pray with you, and so you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can start praying in tongues now. Don't wait. You can have that now. So let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for those that are out there. Father, those, those do pray in the Holy Spirit, that you will remind them of the benefits, Lord, that awaits them, that that water will flow out from the bottom of their temple. It will come out their mouth and they'll continue and then it'll just that river will grow and grow and grow and it'll bring living waters and heal wherever it goes. Father, I thank you for those that are ready to get baptized in the Holy Spirit tonight. That'll be their night in Jesus' mm. name. Amen. Amen. That was fantastic. Um, I've got you use so many scripture references. I'm I like, try to give a buffet and so they <laughs> no, have a take home box. It's a wonderful buffet. And I loved your um, looking back at the type and shadow of the water coming through the temple. I never put those two together. Yeah. That was that really blessed me. Yeah. And we've had a ton of questions come in and they're fantastic. I was quickly glancing through them these last few minutes. So uh, Samaya on YouTube is asking, um, can I pray for the gift of speaking in tongues and to interpret it? Absolutely. And so you can pray in tongues. But you only have to, to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit one time. And so it's a one-time experience. And so just ask, it says, if the Father gives good gifts to those who ask Him, He will give, if He gives evil things, if a good, I'm sorry, if an evil person gives good things to His children, mm. how much more will your Father in Heaven give good gifts and the Holy Spirit to those who ask. You just ask one time, but you're going to have to start speaking out by faith and the Holy Spirit will give that praying, that tongue language to you. And so that's one time, but it says, actually it says, those that pray in tongues, let him pray that he may interpret. And so again, if you're just praying in tongues, just ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, give me an understanding, a spiritual understanding of what I've been praying in tongues, and that'll come to you. Now in a church service, someone will come up and there's a tongue in a church service and then another person's gonna come out and supernaturally they're going, an utterance is gonna come out of them. But in your own prayer language, you may not have the gift of interpretation of tongues, that's for a church service, but you can pray for an understanding of what you're praying in tongues in your own devotional prayer time. Yeah. And then I believe that Holy Spirit will give you that, yeah. be, pray and watch, and He'll give you a prompting and an understanding so that you can pray that out. Yep. That's happened to me yeah. quite a few times. Um, okay, Ruthie on chat is asking, why is it that when some get baptized with the Holy Spirit, they speak in tongues right away and others take a while? Well, uh, you know, Andrew says because he was a denominational boy. Yeah, he was a certain denomination that taught wrong. So there's different reasons. It could be because I was taught there's of the devil and I was like, I, there's just a, a, a hindrance there to doing that. Most of the people do not speak in tongues right away because they don't yield to mm. the Holy Spirit. When yeah. I first started and I learned about the praying in tongues, I was taught correctly that I needed to, I needed to speak. See, the Holy Spirit does not speak in tongues. You speak with tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. That's Acts 2.4. 
They began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. You have mm. to do the speaking. So I realized I had to do the speaking. And so I just got on my, on my knees and I said, Lord, I'm going to speak, but not in English. And I just sounded, it sounded like garble or whatever, but whatever. And, and immediately the devil says, oh, well, you're mocking God. Yeah. And I said, well, I don't want to do that. And so I went to a Christian bookstore and I was in the charismatic section and saw a book and it says hindrances to receiving. And one of them was the devil saying, oh, that's just gibberish. It ain't. So I said, devil, you're not going to take that for me. So I got down on my knees. I said, God, I know I got to give you faith. I got to step out and I got to speak, but not English. So I started speaking and it just seemed like garble to me. And all of a sudden, boom, it just started flowing out of me. Yeah. I could talk as fast as I want, yeah. slow as I want, never stumble over a word and actually read a book while praying in tongues and understanding what I'm reading. Ooh. Try to do that I by talking that. in English and reading. <laughs> yeah. Because why? When you pray in tongues, it's coming out of your spirit, not your head. Yes. And so, yeah, so you have to do the speaking and most of the people don't pray immediately because they're not yielding. They're not by faith speaking out. And so you need mm. to do that. Sometimes when I have someone, uh, I'm praying with someone to receive the baptism, I say, you know what, after we get done, we're going to pray. And if it doesn't automatically come, then, then what, then I'm, we're just going to praying in tongues and I'll start praying in tongues and you pick up some syllables I'm saying, you're not copying me. I guarantee you, if you'll just start saying some syllables, give the Holy Spirit your tongue, then your own prayer language comes out yeah. every single time. Yeah. If they don't come automatically, I'll say, now pick up some of the symbols you're, symbols you're hearing from me and to say them, not in English. And all of a sudden they're, they're praying, they're not following my word. It's coming out their own. Mm. Their own prayer. It's because yeah. they're not yielding. They're not speaking. Right. What's your experience in getting filled with the Spirit? Um, so Audrey Mack, we used to live in the same town as her. So um, she would come to our church and to the Karis Bible College often. And one day she did, she was like, who wants to receive the Holy Spirit? And um, I was like, me, me you know, so um, I, it was so powerful. Exactly what you've just said is that I just, I started, I started moving my mouth, but then these words just came out and then and it was, it was great. And for a long time, that was my language. But then the devil again would say, are you just kind of making this stuff mm -hmm. up? Are yep. you just saying stuff? And one day, this was my proof that I knew this was real because I'm, I'm in church and I hear someone behind me praying my exact language. It was so weird. Like no one has ever spoken my language. It was my language before. But someone was uttering the same things that I utter. And it was almost, it was made me turn around to look to see who it was, like it was so surreal. And then I was like, there is no way that that yeah, person right. can make that up and sound just like me, you know? Yeah. So that for me was my confirmation that it was, uh, it was real. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Which actually, uh, Jennifer on YouTube has just asked this next question. Does everyone have their own private language or do we all sound different or should we sound the same? No, oftentimes you're going to sound different. As a matter of fact, when you first start, some people will just have one syllable that they're repeating over and over and over again. They go, well, maybe I don't have it. I have one syllable. But, you know, it's just like when a, when a small child starts praying, when it starts speaking, they might have one or two syllables, dad, da, papa, whatever. But the more they use it and the more they use right. it, the vocabulary will take on more. It will develop. And so you may, when you pray in tongues, you may have one or two syllables. You're not going to have very, very developed, but if you'll keep doing that, more and more will be given to you. And before long, you have a whole vocabulary that's coming out. It'll sound different. And sometimes my prayer language will change into some, it seems like a different dialect. And so, yeah. and I believe sometimes you can actually start, uh, Holy Spirit can start helping you pray in a, in a, a known language on earth that you don't know. And there's yeah, been a time yeah. when I was on a mission trip where a lady had a t an interpretation of tongues and or, or someone gave a tongue and they give interpretation. Well, someone is the audience and that tongue was of a dialect in Africa in a village that was only taught in that yeah. book in that village. And she'd never learned anything. And so she was giving that guy a message and he was hearing, he was like stopped because it was a unique uh, dialect for him yeah. in his village, in his uh, part of the country in Africa. That's amazing. Yeah. And I, mean, I was just reading an act of the day when they all And the interpretation that was given yeah. was exactly what she was, was correct. Yes. Mm, love that. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Ashley on YouTube is asking, anytime I begin regularly praying in tongues, I get some serious attacks from the enemy. Uh, I'm having a hard time pushing through this. Can yeah. you give me any advice on how to get past this yeah. opposition? The devil hates praying in tongues. That's why he tries to discredit it so bad because he can't understand it. Mm. 
Yeah. It's destroying, you know, you have direct line to headquarters and you're, he's, you're printing out powerful stuff that he doesn't know how to stop it because he doesn't know what you're saying. So he's going to come against you, but that's when you need to take your spiritual authority. And that's the authority. So if you want to learn more about your spiritual authority, Andrew has a wonderful series, wonderful book called The Believer's Authority or The Authority of the Believer. It's Believer's Authority. Believer's Authority. Yep. And so 719-635-1111. And that'll teach you how to exercise your authority over the devil and send him running. Mm. And, and, you'll have author and you'll have victory over that. Amen. Can we squeeze in one more? Yep. Okay. Um, Sharon on YouTube asks, so only people who are born again have the Holy Spirit living inside of them? That's a question. Mm -hmm. And, um, sorry, let me just close that. So how does God communicate to non-believers who don't have the Holy Spirit in them? Well, to, a, to an unbeliever, the message they need to hear is the gospel. Mm. And so that's the only message they need to really hear is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so until the Holy Spirit quickens them, causes them to be born again, the Holy Spirit's within them, they're not really able to hear beyond that and get revelation. And so the first thing they need to hear is the gospel, and it's up to us to preach it to them. Amen. Amen. This has been so good. I have thoroughly enjoyed this teaching tonight, and I can tell from the number of questions that came in that you yeah. guys have thoroughly enjoyed Maybe it too. Maybe Barry will answer those so, on Tuesday. Well, yes. <laughs> yes. So I apologize, guys. We, we could not get to all of them. There were so many that came in this evening. But um, I'm pretty sure you've been blessed. I know I've been blessed. I want to say thank you so much for this. Thank you guys for joining us as well. And um, yep, the prayer line 719-635-1111. And uh, tomorrow's Friday, so we'll be back at 10 a.m. Until then, God bless you and have a wonderful evening. Bless you. I'd like to encourage you to come join me on July the 5th through the 8th for our Summer Family Bible Conference. This is always one of the highlights of our year. We have many different speakers. It goes from Monday night through Friday noon. And this year we've got our patriotic musical, uh, In God We Trust, that will be performed on July the 4th. And I tell you, this is powerful. It's just going to be a special time. We've got special ministry for the youth, for young people. It's a great time. So join us on July the 5th through the 8th for our Summer Family Bible Conference. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 